on a dark desert highway. Wait a minute. That sounds like that old Eagle song. Let me rephrase that. While driving my rig through the desert late at night, trying to get back to the yard. Yeah, that's better. Anyway, that's what we call the place where all the tractor trailers are kept. The yard. I saw something that terrified me deep into the belly of my soul. I always thought it was a myth, a legend, something that truckers just told themselves to keep themselves awake. But I was wrong. You see, I am, well, was, a cross-country truck driver for the Remington Trucking Company based out of a very popular city in California. I'm not married. I don't have any kids. So, why not, right? I mean... I had everything that I needed in my sleeper cab. A bed, a microwave, a mini fridge, a portable DVD player, and a coffee pot. I could wash clothes, get a shower, and get some real food at a truck stop. And there were always lot lizards hanging around all over the place for any other needs, so to speak. Yeah, don't judge. Besides, cross-country truck drivers make a lot of money. Anyway, you don't really care about that, do you? Now, I grew up in Camp Springs, Maryland, and every time that my parents and I would go visit my aunt and uncle and their family in New Jersey, my father would always take exit 7A on the New Jersey Turnpike. You know, the truck route. He would ride that thing all the way down to exit 15 where it ends and merges back into the turnpike itself he claimed it was faster that's how i became infatuated with 18 wheelers it scared the crap out of my mom sometimes but she'd just close her eyes and try to sleep through it i on the other hand loved it anyway when i graduated high school i knew what i wanted to be in life a truck driver. So I saved some money from my cashier job at Billy's Burger Barn and enrolled in a local truck driving school. I completed the six week course and got my CDL. The school then helped me find a job at the Remington Trucking Company. It was all the way across the country but it was a job and I've been there ever since. Anyway I packed my stuff said bye to my parents, got in my car, and headed out for sunny California. I worked here for a couple years, drove their trucks, slept in the cab when I was on the road, slept in the shop when I was not, saved some money, and eventually bought my own rig, a used neon green Kenworth W900. I loved that rig. Well, that's enough about me. Let me tell you what happened. Now, what I'm about to tell you is something that I've never told anyone before. Well, except my therapist, that is. I was heading home after delivering a load of tables, chairs, and sitting booths to a bar in Florida. Some guy named John was remodeling the place or something. Anyway, I got on Route 66 in Albuquerque and began my final stretch home. It was about 2.30 in the morning, I'd say. It was beautiful out that night. The full moon shining down on the road and not another vehicle in sight. Just me and the white lines. I rolled the windows down, letting in the cool night desert air. I turned on the radio and tuned it to KIOT, Coyote 102.5 Classic Rock. They were actually playing some decent songs that night. I drove down the road, rocking out, enjoying the trip, for about an hour and a half. The radio station then began to fade, so I just turned it off. I kept the windows down and just rolled on. With only the sound of the engine humming and the wheels whining on the road and nothing to look at but the white lines. Now, I'm not sure if you know about what's called white line fever. If you do, then great. If you don't, then let me explain. It's basically highway hypnosis. It can happen to anyone, 
especially when you're driving at night. That's when the lines on the road going by so quickly in a flashing pattern hypnotize you so that you have no recollection of driving or anything that happened while you were in that altered state. No, I'm serious. Look it up. Go ahead. Anyway, I caught the fever. The last thing I remember was turning off the radio and suddenly I was sitting at a truck stop about a hundred miles away from where I last remembered being. I blinked my eyes and shook my head. I need coffee, I told myself. I rolled the windows up, shut off the truck, and then went inside. I got the largest cup of coffee that they had, added cream and sugar, just how I like it, paid for it, and then went back out to my truck. I got in the truck, took a drink of my coffee, put the cup in the holder, put my seatbelt on, company rules and all, started the truck, wiped my eyes, put the truck in gear, and rolled out. I got back on the road and continued driving, drinking as much coffee as I possibly could to try and stay awake. Now, as we all know, coffee is full of caffeine, which helps to keep us awake, right? But did you know that too much caffeine will cause it to counteract itself and have the total opposite effect? Well, after about 10 minutes, of pounding back this coffee, my eyes began to feel heavy. Wake up, Mike. Fight through it. You can make it, I told myself. But I was wrong again. As each mile marker passed, my eyes became heavier and heavier, and I felt myself start to doze off. I shook my head to try and snap myself out of it and reached for my coffee cup. In my sleepy state, I reached but could not feel the cup. I took my eyes off the road just for one second, seeing the cup and reaching for it. I turned my hazy eyes back to the road and that is when I saw it, the black dog. As I rolled down Route 66, heading west to California, eyes heavy, barely able to stay awake, my headlights beaming out into the darkness that stood before me, the dog suddenly appeared, completely out of nowhere. Its eyes were blood red, its teeth were sharp and shiny, its coat was as black as the devil's soul, and its face was so hideous that I can't even describe it. That is an image that will forever be burned into my subconscious mind. My headlights shined upon it as it ran full speed down the center of the lane directly toward the front of my truck. Holy shit! I screamed as I hit the brakes and whipped the cab hard to the right. My front passenger steer tire then went off the side of the road, falling a few inches onto the grass and heading straight for a ditch. My rear drive wheels were next to follow. In my panic state, I tried correcting the turn by whipping the cab hard to the left. I thought I was successful until momentum and inertia took over, causing the trailer to slam hard into the driver's side rear drive tires, causing the cab to slide diagonally down the road. I then felt the entire truck start to flip over on its side. I said a little prayer, put my hands over my eyes, and let whatever was going to happen, happen. I screamed as the truck went over and slammed hard onto the ground, flinging me around like a rag doll. Thank God I was wearing my seatbelt. I don't even want to think about what would have happened if I hadn't been wearing it. Always wear your seatbelt. Anyway, the truck then slid about 30 yards, but never went into the ditch. It almost did, but thankfully it did not. The sound of broken glass and grinding metal filled the air, as well as thick gray smoke and the smell of oil and other fluids from the truck's engine. Luckily, the gas tank was not damaged in the crash. 
when it was all over, I just laid there, suspended almost upside down, in the air, still in my seat belt. Thankful to still be alive, I reached up, grabbed the old shit bar, and unlocked my seat belt. My legs then hit the gear shift as my body fell. I maneuvered my legs off of it, still holding on to the bar, and stood on top of the broken glass from the passenger side window, letting go of the bar at that point. Now, what happened next completely terrified me. I was about to call dispatch when I heard it. Now, I've heard other truckers talk about seeing the black dog and the wreck that followed, but I never heard anything like what happened to me. Maybe they left that part out. I don't know. Because this was totally fucked up. As I stood there, I began to hear a low growling sound that intensified with every passing second until it was almost at a deafening tone. I then heard a loud thud followed by scratching on the driver's side door right above my head. I'm glad I rolled them windows up at that truck stop, I thought, as that was the only window not cracked or broken on the truck. I then saw bright red lights shoot across the window. At first I thought they were lights, but they were not. What the fuck was that? I said, followed by another loud thud, this time on the ground. Now, for some reason, I turned and looked out of the windshield, which was severely cracked, and saw two bright red eyes staring directly at me through the cracked windshield. This thing was mere inches away from me. Its face then came into focus. Its snout was pulsating as it opened its mouth, revealing row after row of these immensely white teeth. No, not teeth, fangs. It was drooling and foaming at the mouth for God's sakes. I screamed again and jumped between the driver's seat and the passenger seat into the sleeper, which was totally destroyed by the way. My shoulder landed hard on the edge of the mini fridge. I thought I broke it. I screamed out in pain. I grabbed my shoulder and sat down on top of my now broken microwave. I hunched over as far as I could and ducked my head down so I couldn't be seen. The quote unquote dog then barked the most loudest and most demonic evil bark that I've ever heard in my life. Worse than those evil dogs in that 80's horror movie Devil Dogs. Now, I'm not a very religious man, by any means. I mean, I believe in God, carry a Bible with me on long trips, and all that good stuff. But, I don't go to church, and I've never even read the Bible. But at that moment in time, I really wished I did. Anyway, I saw the Bible amidst all the rubble. I picked it up, held it close to my chest, and prayed, and prayed, and prayed for this thing to go away. It did not go away. Periodically, I would stick my head up above the side of the passenger seat and see it standing there, growling and barking throughout the next three and a half hours. Now, as I said before, I never told anyone this story besides my therapist well, and a guy named Rooster. You see, I had been having night terrors because of it. I would wake up screaming in the middle of the night about three to four times a week. It traumatized me so much that I stopped driving at night altogether in fear of seeing that dog. I knew I needed help, so I called a therapist. I told her this story and told her about my night terrors. She diagnosed me with PTSD and prescribed me Zoloft once a day. I take it at night since it makes me very drowsy. Anyway, it helps a little bit 
I don't wake up screaming half as much nowadays. She also suggested that instead of keeping the whole traumatic experience bottled up inside of me, that I should tell as many people as I possibly could what happened. So, that's what I'm doing here. Anyway, back to the story. Like I was saying, the dog stood there for three and a half hours. Suddenly, I heard the sound of something heavy hitting the glass. I stuck my head above the seat one last time to see the dog rush toward the glass, hitting its head hard against it, cracking it even more. It stepped back, let out this ear-piercing growl, its eyes glowing brighter as it charged the glass once again, this time breaking through it. Pieces of glass shot everywhere. I screamed as I fell back into my sitting position, held the Bible close, and began reciting the Lord's Prayer. I was completely scared shitless. I mean, wouldn't you be? Anyway, I then saw its head rise above the passenger seat and stare directly at me, eyes glowing, fangs showing, and mouth foaming. It snarled, drew back, and was just about to pounce on me when it let out this ear-piercing shriek of pain and began shaking violently. Thick gray smoke then began pouring out of its eyes, its ears, and its mouth. I screamed again. As I did, I saw that, that dog, explode into a cloud of thick gray smoke and then disappear into thin air. I cleared the smoke with my hand, coughed a little bit, only to realize that the sun was beginning to rise. Sunlight must kill this thing, I thought. I had never been so glad to see the sun rise in my whole entire life. The dog was now gone. What the fuck? I said, completely exhausted. I took a deep breath as my fear began to subside. I sat the Bible on the microwave next to me and pulled out my cell phone. I then called dispatch. I gave them my location, told them I flipped my truck, and how long I'd been out there. I didn't tell them what really happened though. Dispatch told me that they'd send out a recovery rotator truck and a heavy duty tow truck. I thanked them and ended the conversation putting my phone back in my pocket. I then took a deep breath, slowly crept over the passenger seat, reached up and grabbed the CB. I pressed the button and said, Breaker 1-9, this is Vanilla Mike. I am 1034, in need of assistance. Anyone got their ears on out there, come back. Hoping that it still worked. Shortly after I put that out on the radio, I got a response. Yeah, Vanilla Mike, this is Red Rooster. I hear your 1034. What's your 20? I then gave him my location. That's what 20 means in trucker lingo, in case you were wondering. Anyway, about 30 minutes went by when I heard the sound of air brakes. I stood up on the side of the seat and looked out of the driver's side window to see a red 18-wheeler stopped on the shoulder of the road right behind my truck. I then climbed out of the driver's side window, maneuvered over to the hood, slid down it to the ground below, walked around to the front of my truck, and began walking over to the red truck. A long red-haired older gentleman climbed out of the cab, met me halfway, and shook my hand. We introduced ourselves to each other. He reminded me of Willie Nelson, wearing a cowboy hat and a pair of cowboy boots. Anyway, he looked at my truck and then asked what happened. I told him. He said, Yep, I seen that black son bitch back in 73. Dead of night. Came out of nowhere. Jackknifed my rig. Almost lost my load and my life. Ugly little sucker. It woke me the hell up though. Are you alright? He asked. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little shaken up, I answered. My shoulder was absolutely killing me. Anyway, 
He then invited me to sit in his truck and said that he would wait with me until the recovery truck arrived. We talked for about two hours about everything under the sun, drinking coffee, telling jokes, and laughing. He had his own coffee maker, by the way. Anyway, the recovery truck and the tow truck finally arrived. It was about 10.30 at this point. It took them four and a half hours to get my truck upright again. The cops had to shut down the westbound lane to do so after they gave me a ticket for inattentive driving. I just paid it. The judge wouldn't have believed me anyway. Now, once my truck was back upright again and I secured a ride home from the tow truck driver, I said goodbye to Rooster. He climbed in his truck, hit the horn a couple times, and just rolled on. He was a good man. I hope our paths cross again one day, under better circumstances, of course. Anyway, I then looked at the damage. It was massive. I was lucky to be alive. If I would have went left and fell on the driver's side, I would have surely died. Yeah, that's it. I'm done. I told myself, once was enough for me, and I never, ever stepped foot in a rig again. The owner of the trucking company was nice enough to have the truck towed back to the shop at his expense. I signed it over to him, and he put it, damaged and all, in the side yard of the shop with a sign across the windshield that reads, Believe the Myth. Now. Even though I don't drive or ride in a truck anymore, I still work here. I'm now in charge of dispatch. The old dispatcher took my job. Good luck to him. Anyway, it pays a lot less money, but I'm okay with that. I don't have to worry about seeing that dog anymore. Now, I assign drivers their loads, provide mapping information, ensure that the product is loaded properly as well as many other things. I don't sleep in the shop anymore. No, I rent a room at the flop house down the street. The room is about as big as my sleeper cab was, maybe a little bit bigger. There's a bed, a dresser, a lamp, and a rolling clothes rack like you see in laundry mats in the corner. I had to buy a new mini fridge, a new microwave, and a new coffee pot, as they were all damaged in the crash. I also bought a small flat screen TV and a DVD player. The flop house does not have cable. Anyway, there's a shared bathroom with three showers side by side at the end of the hall, and a couple coin operated washers and dryers downstairs. It's really not that bad. I don't mess with those lot lizards anymore. No. I got a real girlfriend. Her name's Natasha. I met her at Chelsea's restaurant. My shoulder is doing fine. It was just badly bruised. And I've taken up reading the Bible, just so you know. Now, in closing, I would just like to say, to any of you truckers out there, if you feel your eyes getting heavy, and it's hard to focus on the road, please, please promise me that you'll stop. Pull over on the side of the road. Stop at a gas station. Stop somewhere because the black dog is no myth. It's no legend. No, that dog is real. I've seen it and it's got one hell of a bite.